Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? take an opportunity here um, before I get too far into it I want to thank some people because the last video I did uh, with the hammer that I cast uh, that, that hammer had some issues um, let me show it to you right here it's beautiful beautiful except that the front of it's hollow there was a big uh, void uh, air bubble vacuum bubble whatever it is in the end of this thing and uh, I don't know I didn't know why and I had a lot of people with some great suggestions and some great advice uh, come into the channel after, uh, after I published the video. And I thought I would do a couple things. One, I want to say thank you. Um, some people like Tabo Matt, I assume that's how you say it. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't know how you say the guy's name. Uh, Walt Sorensen, uh, William Mussel, Musil, M-U-S-I-L. I'm not sure how you say your name. Eric K., Kevin Watson, and Chirpy's... Um, Tinkerings, all of you guys, thank you. you. You had some great things. I learned a lot from listening to what you had to say uh, and going off and looking at some of the information that you provided. So uh, I wanted to take an opportunity today to go back and try some of those things and see, you know, how much difference would it make. And I can tell you it made a huge difference. So let's look at what I did, and we'll come back at the end here, and I'll talk about... Uh, the results. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I am going to, first thing I'm going to do is, I've been told, I need to have a choked uh, sprue. And the sprue, so this is what I'm going to use, my wife's turkey baster. She'll be thrilled when she finds out. And we're going to just set that in here like that. And the idea here is that as this thing fills up, this choke will limit the amount of brass coming through here, bronze coming through here. To an even flow so I have basically a reservoir that's coming up and down here as I'm filling and my pouring my lack of pouring ability isn't going to affect how the metal flows into the uh, into the part so that's going to go in first then we're going to run that through a couple of gates that are going to run this direction over to two risers and the idea with the risers is as I'm learning is not to vent stuff out and not to give uh, a place for air to go. It's really a place to supply molten metal to the part as it's cooling and to help it fill in there. So we're going to put in two risers this time. We're going to gate over to them, then we're going to gate into the part itself. I might go ahead and cut out here onto the side, and I can't remember the word, uh, a couple little reservoirs for um, metal to flow out of the part just to make sure I'm getting good flow through it. So we'll get this rammed up, see how she looks. Okay, after much rending of garments and gnashing of teeth, this thing, this thing is finally rammed up. And as I mentioned, we're going to cut, uh, this is going to be our sprue. So we're going to cut sort of a, a, a pond or a puddle here for, for just to help things flow. Um, cut down on the turbulence. There's everything I can do to cut down the turbulence, I guess, is good. I'm going to cut in gates between this and the riser. So and I want to make the gates big enough that they don't freeze up on me. Uh, we have plenty of plenty of area so the molten metal doesn't get cold. Bring that right into the base of the part here. Same thing on this side. We're going to cut another gate. Cut in here. It's like so. Try to get rid of any loose sand I might have. Uh, I don't want that in my pattern. And then the last thing. Try to clean this up right here. Because that will end up looking like a nice crease when we cast it. There's one. 
I'm not going to worry. Oh, man. I'm not going to worry about this too much because that's where the core is going to go. Look at those plinths staying on the bottom. Okay, I put cardboard in my on my crucible. And you see what happened. The plinth stuck to the bottom. So let's get this poured. Come on, baby. Wow. I see it in both holes, but it didn't come up to the top, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's let it cool. See what happened. Okay, before we open this thing up, let's take a quick look at see uh, see what happened here. Remember, this is the sprue. This is where, we're, where the metal came into the thing. And these are the two risers that we had set up. Uh, and their intent is to provide molten metal to the part as it's shrinking. So as the metal is flowing past these things, um, they're going to fill up. You can see they didn't get quite to the top, but they got pretty high. But the interesting thing here is it looks like they um, uh, they shrunk in there pretty good. So I'm hopeful that means that it actually uh, made it into the part. This is pretty cool. These risers did exactly what they were supposed to do. They sucked up inside there. Um, the next step is going to be for me to cut these things off and just see if I've got a void. I don't think I do, though. I think I'm going to be pretty clean. So there you have it. It... it um, it looks great. I was going to show you, let me walk up here, see if it'll focus here. This is what it looked like when I cut it off, here and here. Solid, no void. I don't have any, as far as I can tell, I'm looking inside the, the eye here, nothing. It looks like this thing is solid 100%. So your suggestions worked. I assume they worked. I had um, stuff happen on this pour that I have never seen before this shrinkage along the inside of the tube. I think it did exactly what we were hoping it would do. Um, and further examining here, I think I could be wrong, but this this is the sprue. You can't see that. Let's try this again. <laughs> this is the sprue, and you'll notice I haven't done anything to clean this up. I mean, besides have my hands on it. These are risers, and they came out really pretty clean. This sprue is dirty. Um, every bit of it's dirty, even on the bottom. It's dirtier here, and I don't know if it's catching impurities, if it's, um, uh, you know, if that's just the way it happens or not, but however this worked, this casting came out cleaner. I have less defects in the sand than I had on the first one. Um, just a much, much better pour. All right, well, I learned a lot again. I, I, this was a great learning experience for me. Hopefully you learned something too. Um, I am not an expert. I had a friend of mine today tell me, you know, your videos probably get more views if you actually knew what you were talking about. <laughs> I thought I'd make that clear. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just having fun and I'm learning stuff. So <laughs> if you think otherwise, now you know better. I'm just a guy who's trying to have some fun and learn some stuff along the way. All right, if you want to see the original video uh, with, the, with the casting of this hammer, uh, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner. Click on that, and then from there, there's a playlist you can look at as well. And it'll show you Paul's original videos as well. Um, and you can go by and take a, take a look at his channel. If you want to subscribe to my channel, right there. Click on that link. Have a great day.